All right, well, welcome to our discussion of what to do when Pesach falls on Saturday night. What do we do when Pesach falls on Saturday night? Uh, the word Pesach itself is a, a funny expression in, in, the, in the Talmud. Uh, Pesach is what we call it today. It's the whole holiday of Pesach from the beginning to the end. But in biblical times, uh, Pesach is the holiday the day before. And actually, so this year, Pesach, the day of the slaughtering of the Paschal Lamb, the 14th of Nisan, what we call Erev Pesach, falls on Shabbos. So what do you do in a situation like this? As we'll see in a moment, this question has plagued uh, the Jewish community uh, from its inception. It doesn't happen very often that Pesach, uh, the Erev, what we call Erev Pesach falls on, on Shabbos, or that, or that what we might call Pesach, or the holiday of Passover, or Chag Matzot, the holiday of Matzot, falls on Saturday night. It's not that often. As a matter of fact, there's a story told about Hillel. Before he was famous, uh, they had a problem. They didn't know, could they slaughter the Paschal lamb on the eve of Passover? One time, Erev Pesach fell on Shabbat, and they didn't know whether the offering should be done on Shabbat or not. They said, there's one man, Hillel the Babylonian is his name, and he studied with Shmai and Aftalion, the famous converts who were chief rabbis. He knows if Pesach overrides Shabbat or not, and he declared that the tradition is that you could slaughter the Paschal lamb and skin it, on Shabbat, they would roast it after Shabbat and eat it on Saturday night. So this idea of the confusion about what to do in a year like this goes way back to the time of the temple itself. Even then, there was confusion. But today, we're not worried about slaughtering the Paschal Lamb on Shabbat. That's not our problem. What we're worried about is other, um, other questions. What about Tanit Bechorim? Usually, the era of Pesach is also Tanit Bechorim. It's the it's the fast of the firstborn. What are we going to do? So uh, actually, there were different opinions about it. And today, I am going to discuss different opinions. On next Tuesday, we're going to have a sister in class, and I'll only focus on the bottom line. Here today, we're going to be a little more theoretical, and I'll share with you different opinions, but I'll always give you the bottom line. So there was an opinion that, make it on Friday. There was a, an opinion that was canceled. If you, if you can't fast, what you can't fast on Shabbat, so forget it. But we, we say, that we fast what? What's the bottom line? Bottom line, Thursday. We're going to have the fast of the firstborn on Thursday. This year, it's very nice. There's a seal. There's a completion of the tractate of Psachim, just about Pesach, just a few days before Pesach. So those of us who study a daily page, you know, we, will, uh, we will then um, uh, make a completion of the tractate and a celebration. That morning, we'll have some box lunches to go. Everyone's fighting over who wants to sponsor the box lunches uh, for that morning. What about the burning, right? So picture, just like Jews were wondering thousands of years ago, should they burn the chametz? Should they slaughter the Paschal lamb on, uh, on Shabbat? Well, we have the same problem. Can we burn the chametz on, Sh on Shabbat? So certainly we cannot, we cannot. But the question is, when should we burn? So the Gemara says, we destroyed all before Shabbat, but you leave enough for two meals. Two meals? We need three meals for Shabbos. Why two meals? The Mishnah says when the 14th falls on Shabbat, like this year, we destroy everything before Shabbat. Everything. What about the, the next two meals? These are the words of a mayor. The sages say, no, you'll destroy it when you get there. Destroy it on Shabbat? How do you destroy it on Shabbat? Well, the question is, what does it mean to destroy? What's the issue here? The question is, what does it mean? What's the mitzvah of destroying Chamin? If, the, if you follow Rabbi Judah, that you can only burn it with fire, as it says in the Mishnah on page 21, and then, then you, you can't do it on Shabbat. But if you follow the sages, the majority, that even if you crumble it and cast it to the wind, that works too. If you flush it down the toilet, that works too. I can do that on Shabbat. I can save a piece of chava, eat some of it for breakfast, throw all the rest of it in the toilet, flush it down. I get the mitzvah of destroying chametz. It depends what, what it means to destroy chametz. So we have some medieval rabbis who, who, who chime in. Rather, the Sefer I him, uh, he says we follow Rabbi Judah that you need to burn it. So you have to do it before Shabbat. The reef and the Rambam say, you don't have to destroy it. So you can do it on Shabbat if you don't need to burn it. Rabbi Zerach Levi from Provence said, Raza, we follow majority. You destroy it before Pesach. So the Mikhtam, one of the rabbis from Provence, lays it out very simple. If you hold that beer chamez, destruction of chamez, is only through burning, then it must be done before Shabbos. If you say it can be done in any way, then you can do it on Shabbos. And um, so 
the Shulchan Aruch says, the Shulchan Aruch, the Code of Jewish Law says, before noon, you got to do it before noon on Friday. Why before noon? What's special about noon? Usually we destroy it before noon because afternoon you're not allowed to eat chametz. But on Friday, you could eat chametz all day. You could eat chametz on Friday night. You could eat chametz on Friday morning, on, on Shabbos morning. So why would you why would you burn it before noon? So this is a special idea that Rashi introduced. Rashi said, do it before noon, otherwise you'll get confused next year. You see, if I take the kids today and I say, look kids, we're gonna burn the chametz, you know, right before we light the candles, we'll burn the chametz, we'll have a great party. The next year they'll say, oh, let's burn the chametz before the candles. They say, no, 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 now it's a regular year. We have to burn the chametz before 11.30. So this year we have to, so, so the, uh, many people say, do it before noon. And to be specific, the Mishnah Bura, the bottom line says, we should do it around 11 o'clock before the usual time. And you'll have it in your, in your bulletin, in your calendar. It tells you exactly what time, 11, 11.30 or so. That's when you have to burn it by then on Friday. Some of you don't burn altogether, but if you have the custom to burn it, then you burn it Friday. Again, Friday is nothing special. But just to make it not confused with other years, we burn it on Friday, which is the era of era of Pesach, the eve of the eve of Pesach. We burn it just not to get confused on other years. Now, let's say you say to yourself, this is ridiculous. I'm going to have, this is crazy. I'm going to have chametz. I'm going to have chametz that Shabbos. I don't want to have chametz in my house. Um, I, I want to get rid of everything, right? A lot of a lot of you are very punctilious about these things. I'm sure you already got rid of half of your chametz already, right? So, um, so that Shabbos, the eve of Pesach, you want to have bread for Shabbos? Maybe you can get rid of everything. Do you have to save some bread? So Rabbi Lady says, we get rid of everything before Shabbos. And Rashi says, don't worry about it. You can get the myths for destroying. You can destroy your chametz right now. Let's say you're going on vacation and you're going to leave now for a few months. So you'd burn the chametz before you left. You could do it now. Within 30 days, you can burn it. Now, um, the question is, you know, when is the real mitzvah of destroying the chametz? If there's a real special mitzvah to destroy it on the eve of Pesach, I got to do it then. But maybe not. And, and do I need to burn it? And so there's so many questions. Um, so the Mishnah Brewer says, if you want to check for chametz on Thursday night, which is what we're going to do, Thursday night we're going to check for chametz, take the chametz, the 10 pieces of bread, and you want to burn them right there, that's fine, he says. That's fine. You could burn it right there and uh, don't worry about it. Uh, you get the mitzvah ready. But there's a custom to burn it the following day on Friday before 1130. There is a custom. Uh, we, uh, you, you, you can destroy it for four pages. You don't have to have any bread after that point. Um, but again, some people might want to destroy one piece of it by flushing it down the toilet, something like that, or eating it is also a way of destroying it. Now, when do you annul the chametz? Very important question. Annul it, we know that one of the important things to do before Pesach is to say, well, all chametz that I have in my possession, whether I know about it or I don't know about it, let it be like nothing, let it be annulled, and let it be like the dust of the earth. You have to say that. Usually, when do we say that? When we burn the chametz. Or at the time, let's say if you don't burn it, you don't, you don't want to get involved with fire. The time, for the era of Pesach, in the morning, you say it. So sure enough, this year on Shabbos, we're going to say that. On Shabbos, after diving, we're, going to say, we're probably going to do is we're going to, I didn't work it out yet with the Baron Hirsch, we're probably going to dive in really early, like 7 o'clock in the morning. We'll be finished by 8.30. We'll go home, finish a breakfast by 10.30. That'll be our second meal. And then uh, we'll go home. And before 11.30 hits, we're going to annul our chametz. Um, so after searching Thursday night, you annul it, that any chametz you don't know about, you're annulling it. And after breakfast in the morning, uh, you, you annul it. So it's a little bit unusual this year. We're gonna annul it the first time at the, at the checking of chametz, like we always do. We're not gonna annul it during the burning of chametz, like we always do. And we're gonna annul it after breakfast, the, first, the second meal on Shabbos morning. So that's interesting. Then is other minor question, could you shul daven shachris, go home, and then could you eat lunch before Musaf? That's a different question. We'll get into this second. Um, 
So, uh, so that that's that's that question. Um, there's another interesting question about um, selling the chametz. When when does the sale go into effect? Does it go into effect before Shabbos, or does it go into effect on Shabbos? Can you make a sale that goes into effect on Shabbos? What if I told you I'm selling my house? I'm selling. When am I selling it? Next Shabbos, I'm selling my house. But now, you can't you can't sell your house on Shabbos. So let's say I write a document now that next Shabbos my house goes goes for sale. It goes to another party. That's also not so good. So probably they'll say that. So there are different customs as to what, how they do that. But you don't have to worry about that. That's a rabbinic. Uh, kind of matter. Um, so there are uh, there's so many different questions uh, that come up. And uh, what about shalshus? We skip that one question about shalshus. Let's take a look. Um, firstly, what are we supposed to eat on on that day? So you might say, well, I'll eat matzah. So as we know, we don't eat matzah before Pesach. Yeah, but I have to I have to eat for Shabbos. So it's interesting. Over the centuries, there were different opinions about this. Uh, the, the Jerusalem Talmud says you're not allowed to eat on uh, er, matzah on Erev Pesach. It's like sleeping with the bride in the betrothed father-in-law's house. It's too early. Wait till the night. Be a bench. Wait till the night. Um, so, but the nonetheless, the eater says that our custom eat matzah on Shabbos. In other words, he felt that it was better rather than having all these Ricky's challah running around with the crumbs and everything, then she said, Let, let's eat matzah. So we'll go against the Jerusalem Talmud, who cares? Just once we'll do it. The, um, uh, another rabbi, Rabbi Zrachi Alevi, also from Provence, he says, yes. Um, he says, we bake matzah. It says that there's an old source called the Tosefta. It says we bake matzah on Erev Shabbos. So when do we not eat matzah? That's on a regular year, but a year like this, we have to eat matzah. The Ramban says, that now you bake the matzah for a Saturday night on Friday. You don't bake the matzah for Shabbos. You don't eat matzah on Shabbos. You're not allowed to eat matzah before Pesach. We don't eat matzah several weeks before Pesach. Now, the Rosh said an interesting thing. He says, look, you can't sleep with the bride when you're engaged. Okay. And matzah is compared to that. When are you engaged to the matzah? He says, you know when you're engaged to the matzah? You're engaged to the matzah in the afternoon, when, when chametz is prohibited. In the morning, I can still eat matzah. Ban thought you could eat matzah for breakfast. Yeah, and the Rav Yoh, another German rabbi, he also thought you could bake, bake matzah for the third meal as well. But uh, Rav Moshe Feinstein analyzes like this. If it's a question of impetuousness, what are you eating now for? You can wait till the night, be, pay, be patient. Or is it a question that you should start a matter on the mitzvah and not in the optional mode? You see, starting noon, if it's not prohibited to eat matzah, then it's sort of optional, like on the fourth day of Pesach. You want to have matzah? You can. You don't like matzah brine? You could have yogurt. doesn't make a difference. So you don't want to start eating matzah in the optional mode. That's at noon. But you, if you want to eat matzah, be okay. So um, so bottom line, we we can eat egg matzah. We don't eat, uh, we don't, we don't, we do not eat egg matzah once the third meal starts, in the afternoon, once the prohibition of chametz starts, we don't eat egg matzah. But for the first two meals, if you want to, you could eat egg matzah until 10.30. What about eating egg matzah for shalashudas? So there was a rabbi, Rabbi Nutam, Tosfo, Rashi's grandson, thought you could eat egg matzah for shalashudas. But we don't. We don't eat egg matzah. It's a time of prohibition. So we don't, we're not going to eat egg matzah uh, at all. Um, now, <clears throat> what about what to do with the crumbs? Let's say you decide you 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 like you like to um, have chametz that Shabbos, so you're gonna have you're gonna make a nice challah, make it, and you have chalent and all that, and you're gonna have that that Shabbos. What are you gonna do with the crumbs? What are you gonna do with the, the chalent pot? How are you gonna clean it? What are you gonna do? So Rambam says you take take a sock, put a sock over it, put a put a, a cloth over it. Put it, just put your vessel aside, put it over, put something over it. So the rush was asked a question. Maybe you can give the crumbs to a Gentile. So he says, why should you? You shake it out on the floor. Don't tell this to your mother. Grandmother, shake it out on the floor. Get the crumbs on the floor. Who cares? And you take your finger and you clean it a little bit. No problem. Um, they even said maybe they allowed a little bit of crushing on Shabbos. Usually don't crush things on Shabbos. Maybe it's allowed. 
Maybe you could just annul it. You say, look, that leftover chalon pot, which I don't want to clean until two, two weeks from now. I annul it. I don't want to have anything to do with it. Um, the Bach thought you could give it to the animal. Um, so bottom line, uh, you, again, you could just shake out the crumbs outside in your yard, shake out the crumbs. You could do a light washing with the, with the, uh, the pots, and that would be good enough. All right. Egg matzah. So let's take a look. What about eating egg matzah? So Rashi was in doubt as to whether egg matzah was kosher for Pesach. His grandson said, as long as it has no water, you could eat it. And he would eat egg matzah for the third meal on this, that, that Shabbos that's coming up this year. Um, the Zohar Aruch says, it's fine. You could eat it on Pesach. But the Ramah, that we found out, says, we don't eat egg matzah on Pesach. And that includes Arab Pesach. Um, so, but what I find seen said in a year like this, we find to eat egg matzah right up to the time of prohibition, and then don't worry so much about the crumbs, not such a problem. What about the third meal? There's a third meal, generally speaking, you're supposed to eat three meals on Shabbos. So, uh, you have to eat shalashudas on this particular year. Uh, what do you have to eat in order to fulfill shalashudas? So, in general, um, the Gemara says that if you, if you use fruit, it's fine. Fr fruit for a third meal is fine. Other rabbis say, no, you should always have bread. Um, Rabbi Tom himself could use it, egg matzah because he thought it was okay, but we don't agree with that. We had other rabbis who thought you could eat matzah on the afternoon. We don't do that either. Um, the Maharaj Rothenberg in Germany, he thought you could, you could break the morning meal into two meals. So why don't we do that? Why don't we dive in at five o'clock in the morning? Then we'll eat one meal and we'll take a break and eat another meal. So some say that's ridiculous. You can't, you can't take one meal, bench, and then start again. It's not nice. You can't make so many brachas. You can't artificially bench and then start all over again. It's not right. Um, some say the third meal must be eaten in the afternoon, but you, you can't eat matzah, and you can't. So then maybe we just don't have to do it all together. Um, and uh, the so what does the Shulchan Aruch say? He says egg matzah could be used for the third meal because that's good for the Sephardim, but we can't do that. The Rosh Hashulchan had an interesting solution, which not everyone agrees to. It says you can eat matzah balls for the third meal. Uh, matzah balls are not kosher. If, if I try to take my, my $30 box matzahs and um, crush them up into a matzah ball and eat them for the Seder, let's say I had bad teeth. So I turn it into a matzah ball and I'll eat the matzah ball. I'll make a bracha on the matzah ball. That doesn't work. You can't, you can't have uh, cooked matzah uh, for, uh, for the Seder. So since it's not kosher for the Seder, maybe I can eat it before the Seder. So that's, so he said, maybe that would be fine, but you're not supposed to eat so much. You're not supposed to get filled up before the Seder. So that's not a good solution either. Rather, he thought you could divide the morning meal into two. The, the Vilna Gon quotes the Zohar, that in this year, there's no third meal. But, uh, but the bottom line is that fruit, there's no reason you can't have some fruit, vegetables, for the third meal, just have in mind, and just say this, this fruit is in honor of the third meal. So, um, so that, that, that covers uh, a number of our, of our um, questions that we had. Um, so let's just go over it briefly. So could they, in the olden days, did they slaughter the Paschal lamb on Shabbos? When it fell on Shabbos? Yes, they did. Philo said so. When is the Tanik Bechorim? When is the past the firstborn? There were the people who thought it was on Friday, the Miri, Birki Yosef. We do it on Thursday. We're going to do it Thursday. Some thought you shouldn't do it altogether. When is the burning? Well, it's certainly on Friday. Is it? Could it be all day? Like the Minhagim of Avam Klausner? Or could it be before noon, like the Shulchan Aruch says? Or like the Mishnah Brewer, that it should be specifically the same time you usually burn Chametz, around 11, by 11.30. And that's what we do. That's our bottom line. How much should you get rid of before Shabbos? Some people got rid of everything. We say we can have as much as we need to eat the other meals if you want to have a Chamez Dekha meal. Can you have matzah for any of the meals? We don't. We don't. There were those who thought there was a special exception this year that you could eat matzah for all three meals. We don't. We don't believe you're allowed to do that. We don't have matzah for any of the meals on the last Shabbos. Is it adding to the Torah? If I did eat matzah, would that be considered adding to the Torah? Not necessarily. There's even an interesting midrash that says that that um, 
that the Mijvash says that um, you can even on the first day, you should get rid of chametz. That even on the first, on the era of Pesach, you're allowed to eat matzah. So there is such an idea, but we don't. We do not eat matzah before the seder. And when you want to eat chametz in the morning, you certainly you certainly can if you'd like to. And then you have a problem with the crumbs. You can just brush them off. It's not such a problem. Believe it or not, it's not the crumbs that we're worried about. It's really bigger pieces of chametz. Um, you can certainly shake them out in the yard. Uh, you can uh, you can even uh, do some light cleaning of, of vessels. But it's best to use paper and it's best to try to eat everything up before uh, this the prohibited time around 11.30, 10.30. Can you eat egg matzah? Yes, until t- until 10.30 or so. You can eat egg matzah that Shabbos, but after that, we generally don't unless you're Sephardic. What happens to the third meal? Uh, there are different opinions. Maybe that doesn't, that doesn't happen this year altogether. There were people who made a time thought you could eat egg matzah. We don't. But some of the Ashkenazi rabbis thought you could have matzah. We don't agree with that either. So we just have fruit for the third meal. Do you have to save some bread to destroy at the time of burning? I always thought we tried to do that, but it's not absolutely necessary. You could destroy it on Friday. You get the mitzvah then as well. When do we annul the chametz? Well, we always have two annul, annulments. One after the checking for chametz. On Shabbos, very unusual, we annul the chametz after, da- after we eat on Shabbos morning before 11.30 or so. Can the shul daven, uh, daven shachris and then daven, then you go, you go home and eat and then come back and daven musaf, meaning that they had a full bread meal before they had musaf. There are different opinions about it. Uh, and Mr. Brewer says, if you're very hungry, if there's a special need, you're allowed to do that. Generally, we don't eat a full meal before that. So those are some of the issues uh, of this special year when there's a confluence of Shabbos and the era of Pesach, or rather when when, Shab, when, when uh, Pesach falls on Saturday night, what do we do? And uh, these are some of the issues that come up in a, in a year like this. Of course, throw in COVID to the mix, we have, makes it even more interesting. So I hope that's illuminating. And uh, I, this will conclude our formal part of the program. And then afterwards, we'll take some questions.